Hey YouTube, what's up? It's your boy Sean Austin here again from Sean's Rabbit Train Aquaponic Produce and we're back with another rabbit farming video for you guys. Today, we're going to do a quick one. We're going to walk you through our breeding process from start to finish. So stay tuned. We'll be back with more right after the intro. Hey guys, we're back. Now today, we're gonna talk a bit about our breeding process. So, if it's your first time here, obviously, hit that subscribe button. I guarantee you're gonna like this content and you're gonna wanna be notified when we upload new videos. So make sure you hit that little bell to turn on notifications. First and foremost, we're going out to do breeding. The first thing that I usually do is make a list and this is what my list usually looks like so in the first column that's usually the doe's id number second column their cage number third column is their breed and the fourth column here i usually put the date of the day that i'm doing the breedings what i usually do uh, in cases where i'm doing line breeding i'm going to make additional notes because I may have specific does that I want to breed to a specific box to continue a particular line. But this list, however, isn't there aren't any instances of that. This list, all the does here are strictly for meat production. So with this batch of breeding, it doesn't really matter which doe I breed to which buck because all of the offspring from these litters are going towards the meat market. So they're all going to be called so it makes no difference who the father is okay that's just something to take note of however if you have specific lines you want to continue this is the time to make the notes because you want to make sure you breed those specific females to the assigned box to continue your line i didn't mention this before but as far as the list is concerned we use a uh, software to keep track of everything that happens in the rabbit tree so it's this software that notifies us daily of what rabbits are to be bred or rebred as the case may be. And it's from those notifications that we will compile our list before coming out into the rabbit tree to begin breeding. Okay, so let's start the process. Okay guys, so we compile our list. We're here now at the buck cages. First thing I usually do is open all of the buck cages. Right? And if there's anything in there like the dry cut or husk that I put for them, I usually remove it. So a few quick pointers. Remember, when you're doing breeding, you always bring the dough to the box cage. Never the other way around. That's why I always start here at the box cages. So you get your rhythm here. You know this is where you're going to be bringing each doe. If you take the buck to the doe's cage, a lot of the times breedings aren't successful because the buck spends too much time trying to familiarize himself with his new surroundings as opposed to getting down to the business at hand. So always bring the doe to the box cage. Something else I always say, if you're doing breeding, if you're busy, leave it for another day. You can never be too busy when you're doing breeding because the whole object of this exercise is to be sure that the doe and buck actually copulated so that you can make the necessary notes and plan for the future later. There's no guesswork. I hear instances where people say sometimes a doe is giving trouble to breed so they leave her with the buck overnight and things like that. That is something we never do. One. If the doe isn't receptive, you're just going to stress her out all day and all night with the buck trying to mount her. Secondly, you'll have no way of knowing whether they actually bred. And like I always say, there's no guesswork in this process. You want to be sure that they bred so you can plan, have a set date planned when you're going to do your palpation as well as when you're going to receive your litter. Okay, so having said that, let's get to it. So something that a lot of people do is that they inspect the color of the vulva to help them gauge 
receptiveness of the dough. Uh, I'll be honest with you, it's not something that I always do. I do it sometimes, but it's not something that I depend on because in most cases, the dough is either gonna accept the buck or she's not going to in a short space of time. So I don't see the sense in using the extra time to go through that process. If, if they are receptive, they're gonna accept the buck right away. If not, you're gonna know right away as well. But for the purpose of this exercise, we'll look at it. So guys, you see that there? You see it's a bright red color. That's usually what people look for. And sometimes it's even darker in color than that. And that sometimes gives you an idea of how receptive the dough is. So we're gonna find out now. Level, level. Yeah. There we have it. A one successful fall off. So it's time to remove the dough. Okay guys, so as we saw it, it's simple as that. Something as I should mention is that we practice one fall off per breeding. Okay, I know it's a uh, there are many schools of thought where that is concerned. Some people believe in having two fall-offs, three fall-offs for insurance. But I'll tell you something. If your dough and your buck are healthy, one fall-off is all you need. And if they aren't healthy, you can have five fall-offs and still don't have conception. So there isn't any real insurance in that process. I think it's just me personally. I think it's a waste of time and semen because that same buck could be used to breed multiple does in one session which is what we practice so again let's go get another dough and we'll try again so before we forget we just had one successful breeding so let's get, make a note of that one time this is the second of july uh the dough that we just spread and we're gonna make a note of the buck that was used mm -hmm. I'm gonna put a tick with a one next to it. I'll explain that in a minute. In fact, I can explain it right away. In cases where I use the same buck more than once with different does, I usually number which doe was first, which one was second, which one was third. That way, when you're palpating, you have a way of knowing, okay, which does conceived more with the first fall off as opposed to the second or third fall off. It helps you gauge the productivity of your buck without doing a direct semen analysis, right? It gives you an idea as to how productive he can be so you'll be able to use him better in the future. Okay guys, so we're here again. Let's make a quick check of the vulva. I'll see now. Mm -hmm. Right, so let's try her. This guy here. Remember mm -hmm. I said, all of these breedings uh, strictly for meat production, so it doesn't matter which dough goes with which buck. One successful fall off. Simple. And now we remove the dough. Come, girl. Ah, always support them, right? Easy like that. So you see guys, it's a quick process. You just have to have some patience. If the dough is receptive, you're gonna know right away. It just takes a few seconds. If you have to stand there for five minutes, it's not going to happen. Take her out, try her back another time. I usually breed every other day. So I give them a day rest in between and then I try them again. Okay guys, you see it's been 20, 30 seconds so far. The buck is mounting, the dough is not lifting. So it's safe to assume 
she's not receptive, I'm going to remove her and I'm going to try another dough. Mm. Quick is the word. Okay, that's about 10-15 seconds so far. No joy, so I'm gonna remove her and try someone else. Mm -hmm. mm. Yep. Mm. Mm. All right, I can hear her grunting and she's squeezing up in a corner. So it's Probably a sign that she's not receptive. Oh, but then again, sometimes they do. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, guys, so you all saw the process. Um, I'm gonna stop there because this wasn't an actual breeding day. You know, I just did some breeding for the purposes of this video. So, once I'm done, I replace the coconut husk and close back their cages. Uh, for the those that were not receptive, I'll give them a day and the following day on the second day, I'll try them again. If after that second try, they're still not receptive, then I'll resort to artificial insemination. Now we can just do artificial insemination straight out. Now we can just do artificial insemination throughout. But over time I noticed that uh, the box, they tend to be a bit lethargic when they're not getting as much work, you know? So I like to keep them active. So every now and then I'll mix AI with some natural breeding and so forth, just to keep the box engaged, you know? So, having said all that, that is how simple the breeding process is, at least that's the way we do it, okay, and we've had a lot of success doing it this way. So if you're just getting started, you can try it this way and see if it works for you as well. Of course, there are going to be slight differences depending on your situation, uh, the number of bucks you have to work with, and things like that. But generally speaking, it's a very straightforward process. Keep it simple. No guesswork, like I said. Don't be busy. If you don't have time, do it another day. 
because as you can see if the dough is receptive and the buck is engaged it doesn't take long it's just a few seconds for it to happen and then you're sure of a successful mating and you look forward to a successful conception again if it's your first time pulling up with us don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed this content please give us a like and make sure you turn on notifications so you'll know whenever we release new content okay share this video with someone that you think it will be useful to and don't forget we're on the road to 10,000 we're trying to get to 10,000 subscribers so if you're not subscribed do so now share our channel with someone let them subscribe as well help us get to 10,000 like I said when we get to 10,000 subscribers we're gonna have a giveaway I haven't decided on the giveaway as yet but I'll announce it soon in one of the upcoming videos so Sean Austin on behalf of my business partner Sean McLean Sean's Robert and Aquaponic Produce signing out look forward to seeing you guys in our next video peace